It does not get dark here until 9... 21 p.m. So astronomical twilight ends in 24 minutes. So we're still in twilight. 21, yeah. So, so we we still have a, a little blue sky or, or light sky. It is not totally dark. Drop the uh, the light barrier. Let's see if I can make it a little bit more contrasting. Hey Jeff, as I posted, I was going to try to push the limits tonight. Hi Michael. Yeah, we're trying to push the limits. This is the binary quasar in Ursa Major. <laughs> I've only seen this object one other time, and that was at a stargaze in central Mississippi in April of 2005. And at that event, people were calling out challenge objects for me to look for. And we started with the easy one, which was the jet and M87. And then somebody suggested I go look for the binary quasar and Ursa Major. And I was able to barely see it with my 17 and a half with an old black and white I think it was a, a, a two-second Pro Dob camera. And Saturday night, the uh, group from McDonald Observatory in West Texas went to this target, and they're using a 16-inch F9 RCOS rich accretion with a astrophysics focal reducer that pushes it down to about F6. So basically the same scope, 16-inch F6. Of course, McDonald is at 6,300 feet in elevation and in West Texas where the skies are magnitude seven or so, whereas I'm at elevation 30 feet and I'm in southeast Louisiana. <laughs> Makes a big difference. Yes, with flying termites, yes. Let's see, what are the magnitudes in the stars and that little box kite around it? Uh, the one closest to the quasar is magnitude 14.4. Then going around in clockwise, 14.4, 14.1, 13.5. Fifteen two. <laughs> Supposedly these are just the, the workers, the swarmers, helping the queen find a new place to put a new hive or whatever it is. But uh, from what they say, they're more of a nuisance than anything. As I was telling Dan earlier, um, 
they had a nice graphic depicting what we're seeing. What the hell is that? We're being strafed. Hopefully it's not mosquito spray. There's a little small local airport about three miles to my south. Yeah, so they're probably taking off flying towards the east, I guess. But as the gentleman from uh, McDonald was explaining, what we're seeing is a far distant galaxy and the distance estimate is 8.9 billion light years and in between the galaxy and us is a massive black hole and the light from the galaxy is being gravitationally lensed around the black hole and because the light path is not the same one of the lobes looks larger and brighter than the other the bottom lobe in this case is, is larger and brighter than the top one and that's because the light path from the galaxy to us is shorter for the bottom galaxy And this is with a 10 second exposure, gain is set to, god I'm only 19, I normally set it to 40, I must have, well, when I focused I guess I didn't put it back to 40, I normally use 40 but I'm at 19 out of 160. So. That's about 12% gain. And there's the full field. The galaxy at the bottom. The one at the very bottom is... Um, NGC 3079, that's the edge on uh, aiming up. The quasar is, let me point it out and then it up zoomed out. The quasar is right there. But this is 3079. Let me label them. NGC 3079. And then the one. This one is uh, 1, 2, 3, 1, this is MCG, they label that one. MCG. 9-17-9 and its magnitude is 
should be some other fuzzes in there. to that star. There's a bunch of faint leaders. Let's see. It's a little kite asterism. That's not bad. Let me, uh, I'm going to stop the loop and I'm going to increase the gain to 40. And then start the loop again. So now I've just bumped the gain from 20 to 40. And I'm still average stacking. Let me do another white balance now that it's starting to get a little bit darker. Astronomical twilight ends in about 13 minutes. So we're still in twilight. where these other galaxies are. There's the MCG. There's the quasar. Between the MCG and the quasar, two stars, two stars. Two stars, two stars. The bottom is showing up nicely. Here comes the plane again. They got to be spraying for mosquitoes. That was treetop level. Hope I don't have to close my observatory. Uh, zoom in on the quasars again while we got it. Now you can definitely see both lobes. Very interesting. Might try pushing sharpness up to 50. Oh, I didn't look at the galaxy at the bottom zoomed in. Hey, what does Skyhound say about this? Yeah, that, uh, hmm. 
interesting object. Yeah, what is it? Uh, uh, I'm going to bring over, if I can, there is the picture of the galaxy in a DSS image. Yes, this is up in Ursa Major. And let me see what is the information on this. There's the information on the quasar itself. They're saying 9.2 billion light years, light time. Here comes the plane again. He can't be flying more than about two, two to four hundred feet off the ground. He's, he's skimming the treetops. So right now we're at altitude 56 degrees. So it's not as high as it gets. It's at azimuth 328. So when it was due north, it was higher in the sky. But uh, not bad. So I think my mission is accomplished. I found the first of my challenge objects. The twin quasar. What was the next on my list? Let me stop the live stacking. Histogram to defaults. Let me erase some of this. Uh, you find that Michael <laughs> obviously <laughs> St. Timothy Parish M.A.D. what does M.A.D. stand for I'm gonna have to take a picture of that Michael knows all kinds of stuff. Well, it looks like they've already made their northernmost, easternmost pass, and that because they're gradually moving towards the uh, the west. Okay, let's see what's next on my list. I was going to go for. Another target that I saw at the same star party. What? Let me see if I can find Hickson 75 first.
We had a front came through yesterday and uh, tonight was nice. Tools, designation search. Hickson, H-I-C-K-S-O-N, which one was that? 75. Hickson 75, more object information. It's a galaxy group. And let's look at it, my atlas. Okay, where is that right now? That's, oh, we're gonna do a meridian flip. Woohoo! so much fun. Okay, so let's see where we can go. I want to find the Corona Borealis, Arcturus, twenty-one fifty. So we're yeah. This is definitely in the uh, eastern part of the sky. Constellation is that's Bootes. Arc to Arcturus. Where's Arcturus? Arcturus. No, Arcturus is on the other side of the meridian. Let's see. Where's M5? M5 is. Let's go to M5. That'll give me a chance to try to uh, do a meridian flip and sink. Slew to and center at cursor. The telescope is slewing. Oh, Slow complete. Okay. I know M5 is not going to be in there because when I did a meridian flip, I'm not going to. I'm not going to hit the target for sure. I'm going to do a sink on a star around there. So let me find a bright star near. Una Kal Hai. Okay. Slew to and center at cursor. The telescope is slewing. Maybe I Slow should, complete. Maybe I should go to a shorter exposure. Stop and let's go to something normal. There's two seconds, default histogram. Okay, at least if I can find that star in the finder scope. Oh. Let me see if I can reach the finder scope. Oh. 
You must be going, coming back for a second pass, man. Let I get batteries real cheap at Amazon. Because I am constantly forgetting to turn them off. Let's see, now I gotta do a change east west, so now I wanna go that way, right? That's a star I have not gone to before. Jeff, did you get the email about receiving the package from you? Those adapters work perfectly with my cameras. Yeah, the fit was perfect. Okay. So let me sync telescope to cursor. Telescope position synchronized. So now let me go to M5, just for the heck of it. Slow to and center. The telescope is slowing. And there's M5. Slow complete. Okay, great. So now, my next thing is to go from here to, what was it, Hickson? Hickson 75. <laughs> yeah, but it's not, it's, it's a little bit out of the way this time. <laughs> Hickson 75, more object info, Galaxy Group, Interactive Atlas, slew to and center at the curve. telescope is slewing. See how far it's going to slow. Slow complete. Okay. 
So I've got a Galaxy group coming up. Hickson 75. And Bright Star has got to be in the Galaxy group. So let me go from uh, two seconds to something longer. Ten second loop. Game 40. Okay, that's it. Let me do a flip view. Get the orientation right. Chain of stars. Satellite. And there's the galaxy group. So let me get the galaxy group in the center. Hi, Matt. We're looking at, let me label this first. Uh, this is Hickson. Hickson 75. And let me get the crosshairs up and let me center the galaxy group. Oh, let me go to shorter exposure because otherwise it's going to be hard to. Two second loop. Let me see if I can still see that star. Yeah, okay. So I can still see that star. It's there, and let me go back down to uh, back to stop looping a 10 second exposure now. And I have a 10 second dark applied. Start average stacking. And let me grab the image. Get DSS image. Sky Tools shows one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, at least seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven galaxies in that cluster. Maybe I'll have to go to a little bit longer exposure. Let me stop. Fifteen. the Sky Tools DSS image. So you see there's a little edge on right there in front of which is this Hey Rusty Oh, hi, Michael. Who else did I miss? Yeah, that that, that little uh, ch -ch -ch -ch, that little edge on is uh, 
Let me get this out of the way. That edge on is magnitude 15.7. The bright galaxy behind it is magnitude 15.1. And the little small galaxy above it is magnitude 17. Yeah, the one at 17 is this one right here. And then you got a little uh, circle of galaxies. And in counterclockwise order, you're looking at magnitude 16.5. Sixteen five, seventeen, and the leader is eighteen eight. So let me get my eraser out. And I went to this galaxy group, this Hickson 75, because it's like a jumping off point for another extremely faint target I wanted to look for tonight. Call it the crosshairs, crosshairs, and that's and it's definitely synced on that galaxy group. Telescope position synchronized. So now the real target is more object information. Hogue's object. The telescope is slewing. It's not that far away. Slow complete. Hogue's object is named for one of the past directors of Lowell Observatory. I think it's in the center. It's a challenge. It's right next to this little I call it a little Z of stars. right here. So let me see if I can push out a longer exposure to get Hogue's object to show up. Again, this is another object I have not seen since 2005. my posting to the group I, I, I gave a link to the Wikipedia article on Hogue's object it's basically a galaxy inside of a galaxy I want to 
see if I can get it. It's a circular ring-shaped galaxy. I want to see if I can get a, get a little bit longer exposure. Let's see, I'm at what, right now, 15 seconds. Oh, what the heck, let's try 20. I mean, the last time I saw it was uh, central Mississippi, where the skies were a lot darker than they are here. See color adjustments. Let me boost up the gamma. It, it, it's faintly there, but let me, welcome. here comes the dive bombers. Let me go back with the live stacking. Hopefully it'll clean up a little bit. Let's see if I can uh, get a DSS image in Sky Tools and then bring it over to show you what it's supposed to look like. can see the inner galaxy and then the halo around it. Should have put a I should have put a monochrome camera in for this. Nothing to write home about, but uh, it's it's definitely there. Okay. Like I said, this was going to be challenge object night, so that's it right about there. It's getting a little bit better, Jeff. I went today, all three packages from Rock mysteriously showed up at the post office after sitting at JFK for 11 days. managed to keep a color one for myself and I've already shipped out six other 432 C techs and I have one left waiting for a check to show up. So I finally have a 432 M tech and a 432 C tech that I'm going to hang on to. <laughs>
I said, it's just a, a, a very faint hint of a circular ring around that star. And that star is not really a star, that star is a galaxy. I have sharpened at 50%. I can try turning it off and seeing what happens. I'm at zero now. right above it is magnitude 15 and then the uh, let's let me draw a little along that curve and I'm gonna call out the magnitudes as I go down the top one is magnitude 13.1 the next one right on the edge is 14.7. Below it is 12.6. Brighter, definitely. 12.6. The very bottom one is 10.9. Yeah, it's starting to really come out now. You can see that ring. I'm grabbing a video and I also have the uh, software grabbing an image every 30 seconds. Hi, Bob. <laughs> Sorry, these aren't nachos, Michael. They're just Cool Ranch Doritos. <laughs> now, <Nah>, fried chicken. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Jeff read my mind. <laughs> yeah, the ring is definitely showing up now. Yeah, I had uh, somebody who had seen this before. guided me to it. The, the, the key is this, this, this asterism of stars almost like a number seven along you know, to the side of it. Once you find that then it, it's, it's really close. What did uh, Sky Tools say as far as distance? My tool said six point six giga years, so that's six hundred million light years, and it's sixty five thousand light years across. Wow. It 
definitely didn't look this good in my 17 and a half with a, a black and white Mallinckham Pro Dob back at 05. This is in, um, is it Serpent's Kaput, the, the head of the snake? Yep. I think that was it as far as the stuff that I really wanted to Oaks object and the twin quasar. Yep, that was that was that was my challenge objects for tonight. So if anybody has anything they would like me to try for, preferably in the eastern side of the meridian, so I don't have to do another meridian flip. Uh, I'm game. What is Surfiat's sextet? Atlas, the, the one that uh, broke up. That's, that's going to be low in the north. That, that requires a meridian flip. Oh. You know, now you're teasing me. Meanwhile, let me go to something else first. Let's see. Good night, Michael. You have to get up early and go some for some blood work. I forgot about it, so I gotta be at the, the lab at seven in the morning too. I'm getting a DSS image. I'm gonna look for what do they call this? Surfiat's sextet. Slew to and center at cursor. The telescope is slewing. Let me stop the live stack. Let me erase the description. Slow complete. Well, there they be. Let me see what's causing that. So let me, this is 20 seconds, which may be overkill. Uh, ch -ch 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 -ch. Let me go back down to 15 seconds. Stop. Loop. Looping at 15. And do a white balance, because we're now lower in the, almost due east. That's uh, better. And let's start live stacking. But this is called Jeff. After this, I'll try to S E Y F E R T S. There's supposed to be seven galaxies in there somehow. One, two, four. At 
least. Let me zoom in a hair. When I'm seeing the uh, is that the leader? It's a magnitude 18.6 liter right there at the tip of the uh, arrow. Yeah, because it's 10 now, and i got to be at the lab for 7, so I won't be up much longer myself. Uh, so, Jeff, you wanted to go to the Comet, huh? Let's see. Sun and moon, let's go to current, current comments. Okay. that designation that was Y4 Atlas right twenty nineteen Y4 Atlas why is this list not showing it right now let's do data Comets 2019 Y4 Atlas Well how come it wouldn't plot it in uh Y4 Atlas It might be too low, it's right, I'm trying to find out, uh, C219Y4, let me see if I can do a search, close it, close that, are you sure you want to exit, yes, accept, tools, designated search, C slash 2019Y4. More object information, action, interactive atlas. <coughs> Let's see where it is. <coughs> it's only 13 degrees up right now. Oh no, wait. Now. It's only minus 4 degrees up. No, it's tomorrow. Let's go today. Okay. It's minus two degrees up. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, it's not going to work. Yeah, we should have gotten that earlier. But, uh... Not a bad little cluster of galaxies. Yeah, it did. Uh, let me let 
me <laughs> see if I can get back to it. Tools, designation, search, S E Y F E R T. It's also known as Hicks and 79. Action, interactive atlas. Okay. So what else is around it? Yeah. What does it look like? Here is the DSS image. Good night, Jeff. Glad you could stop by. But it's cool being able, like this edge on is that one up here. That one is that one there. That one is this one back here. Then you got this galaxy in the foreground there. Another galaxy right here. And another one there. And as far as magnitudes, that little edge on is magnitude 16.6, 14.8, that's the bright one right below it, 15.3 below it, the faintest little small one is 16.5. 15.2. So there's a wide array of galaxies in there. I've already captured 158 images. Let's see, I think it showed that the Hercules was not too far away. Hercules Cluster. What is the Turtle Nebula? What the heck? The telescope is slewing. I'm slewing to a turtle. Slow complete. Oh, there it is. Night, Bob. Well, I definitely don't need this long of an exposure. So let me uh, start by Stopping the loop and maybe going to five seconds or four and loop and do a little centering.
Hurdle Nebula, Planetary Nebula, NGC 6210. I don't think I need five seconds for it. Let's try one second. Wow. One second is too much. Let me label it. The blue snow. Ah, uh, well, it lives up to its name. Traces of ring structure. It doesn't really show much. But then my darks won't match. <laughs> I don't have a dark for a. Oh, that's the other thing. I'm got, I'm I'm applying like a 10 second dark or a 15 second dark. Uh, turn the dark off. And then like digital binning. So I've got to stop the looping to change that. Stop. Well, oh, that got small fast. So that's is digital binning level one. That is a one second. Wow, that's stellar. <laughs> it's not a very big target. How big is it? It is 20 seconds of arc in size. It is small. Well, let me go back to stop the exposure. I'm going to go to digital binning 2 again. Start the looping again, one second. And then let's see what else we can find. I'm gladly taking suggestions.
it's too low. See if I can get that low down. Good night, all. Good night, uh, Howard. Yeah, I won't be staying up much longer since I have to get up early for some blood work. Uh, I'm just trying to find something to... You're welcome, Howard. Glad you could stop by. Let me go to... Instead of current comments, I want to go to default. And how about... a bunch of the challenge objects earlier. Let's see, I'm, I'm going to stay on the eastern side of the meridian. Cut down my neighbor's tree. The telescope is slowing. Probably won't see this, but what the heck. Slow complete. from Mega Centauri, but it's only 13 degrees up, and it's... I'm looking through a tree, probably. Okay. The telescope is slewing. Slow complete. It's not going to work either. Well, let's see if I can get to this galaxy. The telescope is slowing. Slow complete. Let's see. I just realized I'm only in like a one second exposure. Uh, that's not it. Am I looking through my neighbor's trees?
microscope as high as I can on the pier. I don't think I have it. Let me find a bright star nearby. The telescope is slowing. Slow complete. I think I missed the star I was going to. Stop. Let me see if I can see it and center it. Or I want to align on. Give me a second, folks. Ah. Well, all of a sudden, it got humid in here. Son of a gun. Must have jiggled the damn cables on the back of the camera when I was... This is, I want to go to M83, which is what, the Southern Fireworks Galaxy? I think it's going to be high enough that I can get it. Okay, 
so let's think on that sync telescope to car telescope sync. position synchronized the telescope is slowing there's the galaxy slow complete stop look M83 Okay, and because of the light pollution in that direction, I don't think I can go to 10 seconds because of the slot L light pollution. They go to 7 seconds. Okay. Okay, M83. So let's import a oh, probably 10 second dark. Okay, 10 second dark applied. not looking too bad. Altitude is 30 degrees and it's almost due south, which is in my worst light pollution. Let me see if I can tweak a little bit of sharpness. Maybe let me try a little bit longer exposure. Let me see if I can go back to 10. Yeah, I was at 7, now we're going to 10. Just the, the light pollution's. How about, let's try eight. Start lime stacking. Let me make sure I got everything clearing the Let's see Antares and the Claw Scorpion rising. 
Yeah, we're down in the muck. So much for my southern light pollution. Folks, I think I'm calling it quits. I have to get up early in the morning. I'm glad y'all could stop by, Lance and uh, Don and guests. Uh, if it's clear tomorrow night, I'll give it, I'll give it another go.